Yepi. Because these heroes by nature are not very tanky. Like G will most likely go towards mech just to increase the death ball potential. But you can probably have your blink dagger at around the same time he picks that up. So I think uh, Funic Sand King is going to be very important to keep an eye on this game for Navi. Indeed, and here we go. And it's going to need to be. Uh, of course, at the side of VP is still in that position where they just need to take one game and they will be claimed the champions battle. here of the Dream League Season 3 LAN Finals. And let's see what goes on as we get ourselves in. Navi versus VP, game four. Having fun calls are called. And let's see what, what kind of lanes we end up going with. As you said, it looks like Na'Vi will indeed to play the defensive tri lane situation here. And it does also look like VP are going to do that as well. So the tri lanes are avoiding each other. For Funic, though, it's not going to be a lot of fun against the Drow Visage. No, definitely not. And let's see if we start off with any detection here from the side of VP. There's a little bit of money on Lil at the moment, so if he wants to go back and buy some more sentries or FNG can uh, bring them down. They should be able to effectively zone out Funic, but again, this is a situation where if he wants to, he can just go to the jungle and farm. Now, the one thing that you're going to be doing if you leave and you go up for like a quicker blink dagger is that there's a higher probability that they're going to be camping the Shadow Fiend mid on the side of VP. So like FNG will probably just sit behind the Shadow Fiend the entire time. But that's going to happen anyway. So you're basically just saying, okay, well, the Visage will pull and get some farm, but I'm also going to farm. Just depends on how much he wants to prioritize getting that early game blink dagger. I guess, I guess that is one of the pluses, the fact that it's just going to be the Drown Massage in lane against Funic and... Well, we'll see how the offlanes go for both Phobos against the kind of uh, heroes that Na'Vi have, you know, the Lycan, the, uh, the Shadow Demon, and what's going to be the Wyvern. In terms of catching out the puck, he should be alright here, shouldn't he, Phobos? He should be able to escape every time. They can't kill him. There's, yeah. there's not a chance. They might be able to zone him a bit, but we also have to take into consideration Drought Aura. And Phobos will likely make some pretty decent trades as long as it's 1v1 support. Lil's going to spot out Funic here. He's doing a little bit of damage, making sure he's not going to get in experience range. Keeping that hero away from level 2 and 3 is massively important because a level 1 jungle sand king, pretty meh. But if you get to level 2 sandstorm, that's already enough to self-sustain on your own. And then you can just continually farm away. I mean, in terms of levels, is there a point where Funic's kind of already pre-planning that he's going to leave this lane, or will it just be a case of if VP are able to find the kills, Funic's just going to sack the bottom lane and he'll just try and stick down here as long as possible? He'll probably stay as long as he can. I think if he feels too pressured, he will eventually just collapse into the woods instead. But he's already got support stacking for him, so it's not really too big of a deal. He's going to get the Grave Chill here, taking a lot of right clicks, actually. He even has to panic skill the Burrow because he's afraid he might drop. Mid lane, as we're seeing SF going up against the Leshrac and Dendi finding the split earth. There'll be a Fisher coming back in return, and oh, G hasn't got the mana though to follow through of any raises. Just trading the hits here, and of course, G as well as having the Shaker back up, the fact that he has got this drown on the team as well is going to make it a little bit nicer for the Shadow Fiend in terms of finding the farm against the Lesh and now Seneca. He's potentially looking for that Courier Snipe. The money is nearly there for this bottle, so so if he hangs around. He might find it. He does this all the time, though. I would be very surprised if VP don't react, at least with a courier, because a lot of people now, they just walk it around instead, and Funnick once again getting scouted oh, out here. Oh, and Illidan, he skilled the gust, so Funnick might not get away. The silence is not going to last long enough, and Funnick will find the strike, but only just. I mean, the lane already pro proving to be quite a nightmare for him, and, well, if FNG is going to come back, he's going to find Seneca here. As you said, it looks like VP were very well aware of what Seneca likes to do in these kind of lineups, and that's going to mean that Shadowfin is going to safely get that bottle out to him. There'll be a rotation from Phobos as well, heading towards that top rune, and mid lane, well, Dendi trying to go in, bringing G low. Phobos will be able to find himself the bounty, and Seneca just turning around here, trading hits with him. We're going to see a movement from the Shadow Demon coming down as well, but nothing's going to come of it, and, and no one dropping yet on either side. Teams like both these teams play against each other quite a bit. Like, they just know the rotations. Like, okay, he has Winter Wyvern. He's going to try to snipe my courier. I'm just going to walk up here and make sure it doesn't happen. And this is just one of the benefits of having a support babysit you, a Shadow Team. It just means that G's early game is going to be great. Dendi. Oh, just able to get out. A couple of raises flying through. Not quite enough. And Seneca, of course, with that Arctic burn. Going to be a little bit of an nice top lane. Well, Phobos finds himself a solo kill, taking down the Shadow Demon. And getting away with his life intact as well, so... That Very drow nice. damage. That's one thing you always got to watch out for. Oh. And they even get the dire courier. With the uh, Visage Illusions. Very nicely done there by Lil. I don't even understand how that can happen. That's actually so bad. I mean, thankfully, Dendi actually has this bottle, so they can teleport supports mid. 
and make sure that he can refill it once they die and come back bottom to base bottom. Yep. Oh, so I was trying to set up something here for Funny. He's trying to move forward, but again, the Gust from Illidan holding back the Sand King. Funny's going to continue to try and move closer and closer. Well, level is Funny. He's still, it's just a level one burst strike, so the range isn't going to be that great. Lil might look to try and deny himself. No, he thinks he can stay alive. It's not going to be a case, and Na'Vi will be able to clean up that kill there onto the Visage. And they get on the board. I think he might have been able to get the deny with Soul Catcher if the Wolves crit him. Like, if one of them would have had to have uh, crit, I think, in order to get that deny, but would have been worth a try, I think. I think he spent his money regardless. Not going to be too huge of a loss. And again, the Shadow Demon leaves the lane, which means, hey, we got a Drow or a Puck in the off lane against your safe lane, Lycan. Not going to be having a great time. I'm looking at the farm at the moment for both the position ones. It's fairly even, and, and uh, Havos does have that slight edge against the Drow Ranger we've seen from VP, but still. It's early days, and, and in this kind of game, with the kind of lineup that VP run, they're going to be obviously very push orientated. At least at the, at the same time, so is Nav. You know, running a position one like it, it kind of feels like they're playing for the same timing in this game. I think VP's timing is actually a bit earlier because their timing starts when you skill your Drought Aura. Basically, okay. it's just like, we want the lanes to go well for us. Already, they get 10 bonus damage, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's essentially just having like a blade of attack and an extra branch in your inventory in terms of damage. So it's nothing small, especially with these heroes like Shadow Fiend who excel once they already have a decent damage start. Ooh, bottom lane, Art Style and Z trying to set this up. Funny moving in, and the Gust is going to be there. Funny still going to try and get out this Burrow Strike. He might be able to find it. He will indeed. Illidan getting low, and now Funny with the sound still keeping himself alive. But the right click flying through from Lil will find the return kill, and Lil might look for more. He hasn't got the Grave Shield again. It's still on cooldown, so won't be able to chase that one. So it is just a one for one trade here. Favoring Na'Vi though, I suppose, shutting down yeah. the position one and getting some more gold onto your Sand King. A very effective trade, to say the least. And the nice thing too for Quanek is that the Chow died before he died, which means he also got golden experience for that exchange, so it makes it even better. And so far, Na'Vi is still doing pretty well here in this early game. Fissure, mid. Yeah, then he's going to be blocked off it, but he's, yeah, he's still able to just walk around the tip. And he's going to be a okay. In terms of the farm in the mid lane, still pretty even. G just with the edge in terms of denies. I think the biggest things is that Arcel is spending a lot of time bottom, right? He's prioritizing, trying to keep the drow down, and getting a disruption into a stun is great. Usually results in a kill if the hero's not fully really weak. They are going to go on Phobos here. Nice dodge though, on that burrow. I think that Phobos is actually going to start getting a lot more experience because the supports are not really pressuring him that much. It's where we want to make sure the drow doesn't get the farm. And, you know, looking at comparing the two offlaners at the moment, well, Phobos just sitting into level 4. Same situation here for Funnick on the Sand King, so a fairly, fairly even game here between the sides. And Funnick, well, he's already got a stat created. He's going to look to try and turn that triple into a quad. And, and this is going to be the point of the game where we'll probably see Funnick sit back a little bit. The bottom lane's been left totally open. We might see Artstar just trying to hang around, get some levels there on the Shadow Demon. But this is going to be the side of Na'Vi just trying to make the most of the map at this point. Now, the important thing for Navi is not losing too much in the first, like, 15-20 minutes. If Vols can get the core items that he needs, he's working his way towards Vlad's right now. And he needs to be careful, FNG's got an invis, they'll be able to get the fish here. And he's gonna try and walk this one around, but the razors will connect, and FNG's nice. just standing there saying, You shall not pass! They'll get the kill, Seneca coming in, it's a little bit too late, he's gonna try and do what he can with the Arctic Burn against G, bringing him low, but G pops the charges, and they will just force Seneca back. A very nice play there from FNG with that invis ring. That block. As we were talking about a second ago, the Lycan is really the key factor here for Navi because he can gap close against Drow like no other. Like he can just walk forward. And the fact of the matter is, VP only have one real hard disable to get rid of him, and that's in the Shaker, right? So if the Lycan gets close range, Illidan has to run. Like he cannot stand there and tank it. And I assume at some point this Lycan is going to be picking up a BKB. So they do have counterplay to the Drow after the mid game is over, and they're not really losing their lanes that hard. So I would actually say that Navi are getting out of this laning phase pretty good. Lil's got to be careful, he doesn't get caught up by a disruption. Art style, he's looking for it, but Lil would just eat himself through the trees, trying to get himself out. They're going to look to... Oh, but they're going very aggressive there with Dendi rotating in as well. They really wanted to try and find something. And now Dendi on the bottom lane, they've left the mid lane to Suneko here, trying to get a few levels onto the wide and trying to work himself towards that curse. And that's going to be a huge tool for them in the team fights because these types of lineups have a tendency to five man. Now they will be able to spread out pretty nicely because they have four range and one melee. So it's not like you're going to be getting huge curses, but the range and the ability is so long and that you can start the fight based off that. And Funnick has also had a pretty good start. So he's sitting on 1300 gold. You're also going to have a blink on him. There's a lot of combo play 
that Navi can execute in these fights, whereas VP, their combo is more or less just waiting for the Shaker to get his Blink Dagger, and the Puck also to get his Blink Dagger. What's so coming in? He's going to be as good as disruption on Illidan's oh. entity as well, but the Fisher might be enough to hold them back. Now the Lightning Storm, the split up coming over, they'll find Illidan. Can they find FNG here as well? The right clicks from Arsene, it might just be enough. The Shadow Poison is just going to be off the mark. FNG trying to juke this one out. Will be able to get himself back to the tower, and the Star will simply TP out. FNG moving in, he won't be able to find the stun as Navi get out and get away with a kill there onto Illidan. Uh, very nice pick off. Taking the Draw Ranger out at this early stage in the game, it's the ideal time. Uh, the other timing would be when your Lycan actually has PKB and you can just run at him. That's also a really good time. But for now, Navi, they've pretty much fully recovered, I would say, from their, their 0 2 to VP earlier on in this series. They, that last game, I think, was a huge motivational boost for the team. And now they actually feel like they're playing Navi's game, which is not letting VP just dictate everything that happens all over the map. Still in terms of farm, of course, Shadow Fiend is sitting at the top G, working towards that mechanism. And with the kind of lineup the VP have got, is that going to be pretty much the first big item that's going to allow them to look to group up and look to start to push down these towers? Yeah, I think so. I think the mech timing is very key. Whenever you have Shadow Fiend... Uh -oh. If he gets caught out, I can find the Gust. He's just going to look to TP out straight away. Is it going to be enough with the Gust duration? Oh, just! Only just! And so yeah. we'll be able to escape from that one. A level 1 Gust is a, is a 3 second silence, so if you do it very quickly, you should always be able to TP. And that is a very nice play, because if he dies again, it's going to become a little bit ridiculous. Needs the supports to try to help him out. Important to note though, Lil is very close to level 6, so once he has his familiars out, he's going to be helping a lot more in these engagements. And even heroes like Shadow Demon can just die to the birds. Like, if they randomly attack you and you're trying to commit to a kill, you just end up trading. And Lil is a phenomenal Visage player, so I'm looking to see if DP start to gain some momentum once they get 6 on him. And Phobos is going to be level 6 after this one creep dies mid. Worth noting, Funnick's been very productive in the jungle, and we're yep. seeing a pre-10 minute Blink Dagger now coming online to the Sand King, thanks to the freedom that he's been given up there. And well, we're seeing a fight kick off on the bottom lane. They have the Fisher block here. Arsenal's going to get taken down. Denny going to look for the TP out, and he is just going to make it. FNG trying to move forward there with the Enchant Totem, looking for the passive, but they take down the Shadow Demon. But Na'Vi, of course, with this Blink SK, we'll see what they're able to achieve. Snake of the just snagging the top rune from Illidan. Uh, the blink timing coming out before the mech is even complete is great news for Navi. And the fact that they haven't shown it yet also means they should be able to take at the very least one free team fight. Like that blink initiation should pretty much result in a kill as long as Dendi's in the area, so you have a nice stun follow up. And you're also looking at your Winter Wyvern who just hit level 6 and has TP available, but I'm not sure if Seneko is actually going to be able to contribute to this bottom smoke. Indeed, we see both lane art style and Dendi maybe feeling confident to go for this one on their own, and it is just Lil alone. They'll find the lining slow and they're moving forward, but they haven't quite got Ooh. the vision. It doesn't matter, the split up still nice. connects, and Lil is just going to get blown up there as Dendi and art style clean up. Almost middle lane. Is he actually going to go for the dive here? He has coil. Gonna have to drop in the Fisher as well. Just coming in in time, FNG walking forward. And of course, we'll take the Dream Coil stun to the face. And Funny Cash walking up to the high ground will, of course, reveal the Blink Dagger. Yeah. So if VP were keeping their eyes open, they'll know that that is there and, and almost certainly just play a little bit more carefully when they go out in these lanes. Radiant to be honest, a lot of the time when you see an item like that, you have a tendency to ping, but maybe they're just on voice comms and they didn't. I think it would be. Pretty irresponsible to not click Funnick when it's already 11 minutes into the game. So I'm kind of in the same boat as you. I think they probably did see it. But you still have to be very cautious all the time now because if Funnick gets one good epi or like a couple of good pro strikes even, they can turn the fight just based off that. Like regardless of whether or not you have met because the stun follow-up is going to be so strong. And again, P do not have a lot of ways to peel. Like, how do you actually stop Na'Vi from running into you with that Lycan once he starts getting that BKB up? VP really need to try to get this mech timing and make something happen because as of right now, it's around 12 minutes in. The Drow Visage timing is around 15 to 20 minutes where it reaches, like, a really strong point. And I think by then, Na'Vi might already have all the tools they need to deal with it. And we're talking about the plan for Na'Vi, what is the idea now? Do they want to try and take this tier 1 in the mid lane and then maybe look for Roshan? Or could they even look for Roshan a little bit early now with the fact that they do have this medallion on the Lycan? Oh, the Lycan can just solo it. Yeah. It doesn't even matter. Like, if Na'Vi take one good engagement, they get Roshan. 100%. There's no way that VP are going to be able to contest. Although, with a mid tier 1 still standing, I think that Na'Vi might prioritize that first. It just depends on how aggressive VP are. Because if they get caught out by this Blink Dagger, and they lose a couple of heroes, it's tier 1 into Roche. 
Gia going forward to slow from this left track. There'll be the Fisher on Tart Star. All being forward. He's not going to want to jump forward to that. Oh, yes, he is. Phobos says, I want to fight. Dream Call drop to Tart Star and Dendi. Dendi trying to turn this one around. Trying to find the puck. Low ground looks. Frame Soul stuff. She's in the races as well from G. Bringing Dendi low. But not funny coming in with the epicenter. Will bring down Illidan. And now with the curse controlling Lil. Can Navi look for anything else? It's going to be Phobos just zipping around. Trying to clean up. Lil's found a double kill. Phobos with the Rainy Rift holding back Funnic and Havoste. They're trying to get something out of this fight. But at the moment, it's just VP with the superior control and Phobos is brashness they're jumping straight in working out there very nicely for the radio and the birds were right on top of them too so they managed to get one of the supports straight away there was no disruption there but if you think about it Navi only lost supports for that and they still killed Illidan so if they manage to somehow defend this tower I think it might not be too bad but I think Dendi is actually just counter pushing top lane while this is going on so maybe in the end Virtus Pro will be able to get that uh, tier one tower and right now that is actually going to be their first tower if they can secure it looks like Navi though enforcing this they got three here now I mean to be honest that fight could have gone a lot worse for Navi only losing uh, Seneco and art style that's not too bad and after that bit of a bit of a fight they're gonna let Ferocious head oh, won't quite be able to bring down the bird but I don't think that's going to matter too much. Illidan is making his way towards that with the back of the G and Lil. The question is if they can get there in time. They're going to smoke up. Roshan is taking his time. And if they can jump into this, this one will be a, a maybe a good fight for VP if they can get them. But no, I mean, they've got the full fight man around. It's going to be very hard to take this fight if you are, you are VP. They're still yet to hit level 6 with the Surge Shaker. They don't have the Echo Slam. Illidan moving forward with the D Ward. Now Funny can be forward getting the Burrow Strike onto Lil as well. Then he's been trapped the other side of the Fisher and Havorstead with the ultimate form, maybe trying to find this, but they're all getting incredibly low. Dendi will be kept alive here by the Cold Embrace, but Illidan, he's getting taken down. They will find the kill of the Drow Ranger. Now Funnick with a Burrow Strike onto two, he's going to make a second kill happen. The FNG falling as well. G got off the high ground, trying to fight up against our star, but G's going to lose his life. It's a double kill for Dendi. Phobos, the only one to remain alive. He might find the kill onto Funnick. Oh, Funnick there with a the Sandstorm just in time. Phobos has to all down to the low ground, and Na'Vi taking a very convincing fight there. I gotta say, the, the Winter Wyvern came in huge there, saving Dendi Seneko on point with his Cold Embrace. They didn't even use Winter's Curse for that team fight, and they still managed to take it convincingly. I think a lot of the issue, too, was the fact that FNG is still not level 6. He doesn't have Echo Slam, so he's walking in. He wants to try to do something, anything, to try to secure a single kill, but he has so little experience right now that he's just, he's not really able to contribute much. And you compare that to Funnick right now, who's been in that off lane. He got his Blink Dagger. They're even going to get both Familiars off of the Roshan, so that's another 200 bonus goal that they get. I think Na'Vi, right now, they have had probably one of the better early games that you can expect against the Drow Visage lineup, and I can't really see it slowing down. Oh, CVP just looks apply some pressure. They'll, they'll finally be able to clear out this tier one here in the mid lane from the side of Na'Vi. But yeah, in terms of the net worth difference, Na'Vi starting to break away. Coming towards that 7,500 lead that it's settling around in terms of XP as well, reaching 10k. I mean, the question is, for VP at this point, I mean, how's G doing on top of uh, the mechanism? Well, he's working towards that BKB. He has the overclub. He does do this. The other problem, though, is that since they're only going to have one hero with BKB and Illidan is kind of really easy to take out, they can just focus the Winter's Curse and the Soul Catcher and like everything on G. And they can take him out with just the Lycan, who is probably going to have a uh, book pretty soon. And he does have Aegis available on top of that, so they can just Kamikaze G and take him out, I think. That's going to be the real issue, is getting farther and farther into the game, dealing with the Lesh and the Lycan is going to become a huge problem, as again, not that many Disables. Not at all. And funny, just continues to farm. What's his next item of choice going to be? I mean, what does he go for off the blink dagger in your mind for this SK? Well, I think four staff is a pretty good choice yeah. in most games, just to be able to reposition yourself. You don't always have to get a big epi if you're landing consistent, like two or three man burrow strikes. And Funnick has shown that he's very proficient on the sand king middle FNG, lane. FNG, Fisher indeed onto her burst. Got, a, got everyone here on the side of EP, but not really having the tools to go further. Dendi has now completed his Bloodstone here, so pretty good timing. Not the quickest kind of uh, less track Bloodstone timing we've seen this tournament, but it's online nonetheless. And I mean, 17 minutes ain't it's, bad. Yeah, it's I mean, still really I'm, good. I'm, I'm kind of used to kind of the G's kind of 13, 14 minute less Bloodstone. You didn't have like 600 GPM at the start of the game. How dare you? No, I, I'm definitely on the same page. But we've seen some faster ones, but I do think that I feel like I might go back for something like Yule's actually too. I, I, I know he really likes that item. He bought it on, I think it was Nyx the other day, and he actually opted out of getting a Blink Dagger even to buy it. So I think um, Sand King with Yules is also very nice. Kind of solves all your mana issues. 
Let's see what he goes for. And looking at VP right now, like G getting the BKB, it's nice. And they do have a lot of physical damage. But I actually think that their lineup makes Winter Wyvern better. Because if you cold embrace somebody and you're relying on the Drow and the Shadow Fang to be able to burst them down with Visage Birds, it's not going to work. Like you're actually just going to die in the time that the cold embrace saves that hero. And then you could just get cursed as well. Mid lane, let's see if uh, the Sardin Navi want to push this one. Just the three of them at the moment. We do have Funny coming in as well here from the side. And yeah, it's the full five man of Navi gravitating towards this mid tier one. They look, they want to fight here. FNG coming very close to them and going to get caught out here by the slow. Burrow strikes going to be off point. The split up's not. They're controlling FNG. And now Illidan coming in with the gust to hold back Dendi. The Fisher will be enough to stop Navi from going any more aggressive up there. But the fortification coming out in the mid lane. We'll buy this tier one sometime. But now with this Necro book and with the Wolves. Well, let's go back in. Now with the ult, they maybe want to try and look to go deeper and try and find the fight. There'll be a Fisher holding back the Wolves. But now G getting caught out here on the Shadow Fin. And he's just going to evaporate there to the damage from Na'Vi. So all the assumption onto a vote, but a is going to continue to chase. Arstar getting low here. The Dream Cold controlling him, but against Saneko. Keeping him alive here with the Embrace. Arstar so low. Echo Sound will come out, but it's a double kill for her vote. He's just cleaning up. He'll find Illidan as well, making it a triple kill. Vodic blinks forward. They want to find FNG as well here for the looks of it. And they will do indeed with a Burrow Strike. Ultra kill for a vote. Oh no, he's not going to be around page he's trying to chase down the visage and he might just find it here with the wolves bringing him alone no it's gonna hold him back there the two familiars now to reach some of the wolves they're gonna chase it i think lil gets away from this one but still an ultra kill for her boast in the mid lane again navi what a fight there's no control they, they can't stop them from just walking into you that's really the problem with the lineup in general and they needed to be able to win the lanes a lot harder than they did and simply put, like, the Lycan still farmed out very well. We're going to get a chance to watch this fight again. And we can just see there's absolutely no response. Like, Havos, he pops his ulti. He just starts running in. And the rest of VP are standing there like, okay, yeah, we coil. But it's on art style, who's alone. We wanted to try to get a kill on him. And eventually do. They also commit Havos to his orb to do that. And they both get cursed at the same time. And at that point, the fight's already over. Like, FNG can do nothing at this point. That was uh, a pretty big advantage. So then he's going to get caught out here. The question is, do they have the damage? And well, the answer is no, they don't by the looks of it. Then they're able to ward this one off. FNG, I oh, was thinking if he could get that second Fisher through, but no, then he's a little bit too speedy. And some items being picked up now from Navi. Funnick now has got the completed four stuff on top of his Blink Dagger. And of course, as we were seeing that last fight, the fact that Snake has got a Glimmer Cape. 12 Bloodstone charges now onto Dendi. And you do now, thanks to that fight, have a level three Necro book onto her most. This is terrifying for VP. I'm thinking if there's any way they can actually outplay that, but. In reality, they need BKBs, and they desperately need Blink on FNG. Those are the only things that I can foresee actually changing the outcome of any of these fights, and like trying to favor Virtus Pro. Because at the moment, FNG is broke, right? Like He's got 29 gold to his name, he's been playing hard 5, Earthshaker, so not really getting any of the farm priority. I think they were relying a lot on being able to get early towers to supplement the gold income for him so he could get to his Blink Dagger, because otherwise he's just spending all his money on wards and they're not winning team fights, so he has no other source of income at all, and he's even letting Lil get the farm so maybe he can make his way towards that Aghanims. And there's only one tower down for Na'Vi, and that's the mid tower. And it's going to be a tricky one for the side of VP, but I mean, we've seen them be able to pull some some crazy stuff out of the bag before, and, and let's see if they can do it this game. Top lane. Maybe they can want to want to fight, but Navi, they're going to be ready FNG there. Full force. This is a half five of them to go for. Fish coming out. There's going to be the blink board from Phobos. It's all of a sudden you bring Danny low, but it's not quite enough. Now Phobos just turning up. He's found one. He's found two. There's going to be two dropping on the side of VP. The Requiem coming out, but still no one's to fall on the side of Navi. G will get the punches. Well, Charles tell the Soul Sum should bring him low. They do finally kill into the Shadow Demon, but Phobos, he's just running around and he's going to look for more now. Funny blinking forward with a burst strike onto G. Phobos now with a triple kill. Lil trying to chase down Dendi, but Phobos to Snake are moving here with the R burn they will find it. no they're not Dendi's gonna be able to get themselves away Lil's looking for no the way but Funny, is he gonna get out oh. no the burrow strike there from Funny catching him just in the nick of time everyone dying on the side of VP and again they just can't seem to take these fights against Na'Vi I feel so bad for FNG right now. He got stuck in trees because of two wolves. And then when Funnick came in with the epicenter, he was forced to just panic Echo because he knew he was going to die anyway. Like, he wanted to try to deal some form of damage. But these team fights, it is so difficult for VP to get in. When, and how did they deal with Hamos? Look at this. FNG's stuck. Yeah. He's sitting there like, 
please God, somebody help me. They go in. The start of this fight actually didn't look too bad for the side of VP because they get a couple of heroes low really fast. The Koi was on two. But again, Seneko coming in with the heal. That Requiem actually would have killed Dendi had he not used Cold Embrace. And then maybe they wouldn't have had to commit so hard for Lil to make something happen. But again, here comes the boast. He's got the ult form activated. G can do nothing. Funnick gets another nice Burrow Strike off to secure that kill. And at this point, it's just Lil versus the world. And despite his best efforts, he was not able to make it out here. And now uh, oh, I've got to know as well, they did kill Dendi. It's just the fact that he respawned straight yeah. away. Thanks to the Bloodstone charges. It, yeah. He was literally back straight into the game immediately. But still nonetheless, 18 to 10 now for the side of Na'Vi. The net worth difference getting bigger and bigger. And the question is, with the kind of lineup that VP are running, how much of a comeback potential is there, Andy? I think this is actually the most convincing lead that we've seen so far in the series, just in general. And I think it has a very similar feeling to yesterday's winter bracket finals when Navi came in and won the most decisive game. And I believe Cinderin also said that uh, during some of the pregame talks. So for me right now, Navi feel to be in a very good spot. Not untouchable, but it is definitely an uphill battle Radiance if you're VP. And again, the attack. first thing that you need on the road to recovery is BKB on your Shadow Fiend and Blink Dagger on your Initiator on that Shaker. I mean, Bobos has one, which is nice. But I think Havost, okay, he's not going BKB now. He's going for the Assault Care SS dive, which is still okay. But once he gets BKB, unstoppable. Like, he, go he goes into shapeshift form, he pops BKB with his book. No one on BP can touch that. Alright, I mean, BP, how are we doing in terms of looking for the, well, the Blink Dagger for the Ursh? It's still a bit of a pipe dream. Yes. Poor old FNG. He's a, he's a long, long way away from it. I mean, maybe they can find a fight and things look good. You know, seeing Lil himself working towards that agony. So he's got two of the components so far. Illidan, I guess the Yogi Club himself, deciding that a BKB is going to have to be the order of the day here for this Drow Ranger, which it kind of feels like in, I believe, was it the Havost anti mage that built a BKB? No, no it was the Juggernaut, wasn't it? Yeah, it was it's Juggernaut. kind of one of those items that building it on a Drow. You don't really want to be forced to do so, but he kind of has to in this situation. You actually want to build primarily stat items. Like SNY is very common on Drow and these types of lineups. If you do very well in the laning phase, because it just gives you more benefit of your uh, precision aura. Oh, but here we go. This is a big jump in from Phobos. They're catching out Dendi and Seneca. They'll be able to bring down the less track. Seneca will have the defensive disruption coming out from Artstyle, and Seneca's just going to turn this one with the curse on to G. Her voice moving forward. Look at this damn Echo Slam will come out from FG holding Seneca in place, but now he's going to embrace himself. Phobos will still be able to get the magical damage through the bring. Oh, oh, oh. there with the epicenter, the burrow strike onto three, triple kill for Avos, so they take down Illidan. And again in these fights, just a combination plays from Funnick and Avos. That's the third team fight where we've seen Na'Vi take down four or five heroes and, and then themselves losing one, this time losing two, but still. I don't know, man. This is looking to be a pretty tricky one for BP. You know, I gotta say, in that team fight, the curse seemed a little bit lackluster coming out from Saneko. And then you saw Funna come in after the fact because the curse didn't really taunt anyone. It was just there, I guess, to try to stop Dendi from going a little bit farther in. And during that time, he gets annihilated, right? Like, Lycan just chews him apart. Nothing he can do there. And then just ending the fight with the burrow. I think BP actually had to jump that, though. They see an opportunity for two heroes out of position. They say, look, we're very far behind. We need to try to get something, anything going for us so we can get some gold on it, at least FNG. I actually think he's the most important hero to get gold on right now outside of the SF. And other than that, it's just, that's a full Assault Cure S on your Lycan after that team fight. Like, I actually have no idea how they're going to kill that hero. 26 minutes in his idea. He's about 6,000 in terms of net worth ahead of the Shadow Fiend. It's a massive, massive jump. And understandably so, we've seen him get more ultra kill, triple kill, you know, triple kill after triple kill pretty much in every single fight. Avost has been picking up that goal. And, and well, it's just kind of a question of what VP can do in reaction to this lead that Na'Vi have. I mean, what is their best bet? Is it kind of waiting for Na'Vi to take the fight to them and to, to look for the counter, in, counter initiate? But at the same time, what kind of tools do they have to do that? They do have the blink on Phobos, but as we keep saying, FNG, I'm starting to question if they even have a blink by the end of this game. The problem with VP's lineup is a lot of their heroes are very susceptible to mobility. So, Radiance like for instance, the Shaker, the Drow, even the Puck to a, to a degree, because Lycan can actually just chase a Puck down. You have that movement speed bonus from the Shapeshift and you can just run at him forever, force him to just use his orb defensively, and he can't really do much, right? So no one on the side of VP can actually stand against a Lycan at this point. I think really the problem with VP's lineup is they needed to do more in the early game than they actually accomplished. And here we go, they're going to try and break the base here, Na'Vi. They've just picked up a completed mech on Seneko as well. 
This is going to be so hard for VP to fight into. Fortification will come out, but Na'Vi, when they're looking to back up, they're probably just going to wait for this next creep, next creep one to come through, but the tools that they have at their disposal, the fact that Lycan now looking towards that BKB has the Ogre Club picked up. It's... I mean, I did Andy. Say something. I'm thinking, man. I'm really yeah. thinking if VP can actually find a way to play this, and it, it's tough, but like, that's all I can say. What, look at this Lycan. He's got, what, 35 armor right now? 2100 health? Again, it just boils down to the fact that this lineup is supposed to be more successful in the first 15 minutes, 20 minutes of the game than what they were. Na'Vi just managed to find a couple of really nice kills. Imagine back to the first game of the series, if Na'Vi managed to get some good skirmishes going with their AM, it would have had a very similar feeling to this game. And I think that game was very deceptive in that people looked at how it rolled out and said, oh man, well, clearly it was just an outtrap. But Na'Vi actually had about the same opportunity to do that to VP in that game they do this one. It's just hitting that proper timing, and VP were never really able to get there. So now a lot of their heroes, they just feel anemic. Like, what is a Drow Ranger supposed to do? He has an over and treads, and it's 28 minutes in. There we go, Funny oh with the epicenter catching Illidan and Lil now with the curse on Lil holding him in place to bring down the Visage. Oh, was jumping forward here with Green Call, trying to do what he can. Effigy's popped the Echoes down, but it's just not enough. Maybe with G coming in, they could do the damage. They managed to bring down Funny. A boss being protected here by the Embrace. They're keeping him in their side of the base, and they will find the Lycan kill as well. This is the best fight we've seen from VP so far. The birds are going to chase down the remainder. Maybe they can find more. Phobos blinking forward, orbing as well with the Raining Rift. They'll find a third kill, and now it's Denny just on the run. The question is, can they chase him down? He's going to start to buy up. He you know, builds towards that BKB, picks up the Ogre Club and the Mithra Hammer. Looks like he will escape anyway. But that was a very impressive fight from VP considering how the last you know, three, four team fights have gone against Nami. I think the fight recap is a little bit off. I'm pretty sure it was a little bit more than 174 gold exchange there uh, for VP. But either way, like you said, amazing fight. They actually get the godlike. Who received that one? It was... Um Wait, who actually got the uh, for that? Uh, it was There's like Illidan. a bunch of kills I think it was Illidan. Yeah, it was Illidan. Okay, yeah, was so Illidan. That's, yeah. that's really nice for him. That pretty much puts him directly at BKB. They're going to counter pressure the tier 2 middle here. Not really going to be able to get much damage on it, though. I think they'll feel more than happy with just being able to kill those heroes. The one thing, though, is, again, FNG, he got some money for that. Still very far away from Blink. I think these engagements are so important to have Blink Dagger when you have this lineup of Na'Vi who just want to run at you. Like they want to go high ground, they want to pop shape shift, they want to just fly into your base and kill you. And having an Echo Slime available would make that significantly harder to do. And the other thing too that's important here is there is some tankiness that VP can get. Like I think G right now has picked up an ultimate orb, so he might be going for the Scotty. They need some hero who can actually stand in the front line against a Lycan and not just immediately explode. But that's going to be a tall order because, again, Art Style has that Soul Catcher, and it does penetrate BKB. So if Lycan gets on you and you're not tanky enough, you just die. But G, he's trying to make his way back in somehow. I even think stuff like Assault Kiras would be really nice on him, but it doesn't give him any health. So itemizing against this team is also very difficult. Yeah, one thing that's going to be a lot harder for VP in the next fight is the fact that, well, Havost, he's just halfway through the recipe of his BKB, so he's going to have that online fairly shortly, and the fact that Dendi now just sitting just under 50 gold away from his own completed BKB. So with the BKBs online for Na'Vi, the defenses from VP are just going to be that little bit harder. They're still actually farming, like, creep-wise, not too bad. But SF is barely below Dendi, like, a couple of CS difference, no real... Big deal there. The big difference though is the Drow and the Lycan. The Drow actually has half the CS of the Lycan at this point, and Funnick is almost tied in terms of creep kills with uh, Illidan at this point. And that ain't great. Oh, this is actually a really nice pickup from Phobos, by the way. The Aghanim's Coil, that could actually be very strong against Na'Vi. Instead of the Lycan just being able to freely walk around and do whatever he wants, this is a guaranteed four and a half second stun if he breaks that coil, regardless of whether or not he has BKB. So for the first time in the game, VP actually have some way of controlling the Lycan outside of just the Shaker, which can be the difference between catching him out completely and just getting a kill on him and forcing another nice engagement like we saw in middle lane, and then him just running into you and just killing you instantly. So this is actually a very nice pickup. Indeed, now having a look at Illidan as well, how's he been able to catch up? Oh, on top of the BKB, 1500 gold. Now, for himself, what do you reckon we'll see? He, what will he try and work towards now? Now he's got the BKB and a bit more sustainability. I'm kind of wondering the same, actually. <laughs> like, you have BKB, right? To keep yourself safe from the Blink Burrow, of course, and stay on the back line. I think you kind of want to build some stat items. Like, I don't think Casual Yasha is the worst choice, just in regards to what it offers the rest of your team. You have Visage, obviously, you have Shadow Fiend, you have Puck. 
the right click damage that you gain from having this stat item is still, I would say, worth it. And being able to move a little bit faster isn't bad either. Like being mobile in fights is something that Drow, she kind of needs. If you're not mobile, you need a team that's frontline and control heavy to be able to stop the enemy from getting to you. Since Virtus Pro don't have that, I think anything that allows him to be more maneuverable would be better. There we go. He's uh, closing in on his Scardi as well, G. We'll see if he's able to get that one online sooner or later. But yeah, this next fight, it's all going to be about the Phobos stream core. If he's yeah. able to catch out these two heroes that have just picked up the DKBs, both the Lycan and the Leshrac, maybe VP can swing the fight very convincingly. Yes, I think it's the safest bet for VP right now is just to wait until Navi try to go high ground again. But what Navi could do is they could just wait out the next Roshan spawn. It's going to be showing how long it's going to be taking uh, in the next probably like 10 seconds or so. And then once they scout it out, they'll decide what they want to do from there. And this is a very tense moment in the game for BP because if they end up losing this game, it's going to match point. Like either team that wins just automatically wins the entire series. It's got to be a little bit... Not demoralizing, but it's got to be frustrating to go from 2-0 to being in this position where you're actually losing the fourth game. And there's smokes up here. BP wrapping around into their own jungle. It's going to get dispelled here by Funnic, though. Oh, that's such an early BKB, actually. They need to just run right now. Uh, this question is, do Na'Vi try and turn back into this one? BP looking to chase it. So not going to follow through to Owl by Boston now. Well, Funnic is going to get the Boros Track onto G. Dendi, they're going to be able to clean up Illidan with a curse. They're going to find Lil here as well. Illidan buying back. Well, here we go. The Boros Track onto G bringing him solo now. Vost with the BKB. Chase them all down. Dendi with a double kill. And that's going to be a Vost just diving. It's now looking for more. The Boros Strike catching out FNG. The Suns will come out from Phobos, but it doesn't look like it's enough to stop them. No, for Ho a Vost will take down the Earth uh, as well. And we were talking about how key the Phobos Dream Call would be in, and it just didn't come in that situation. Not just getting the upper hand, forcing out a buyback from Illidan, taking the tier 2, and now with three heroes down, the fact that G, he does not have buyback on this Shadow Fiend. And regarding the pushing power of Na'Vi, these, these racks are going to melt if they get out of the Assault Kuras on the Lycan is going to ensure that this base dies very, very quickly. I would imagine that during that that engagement with BP, G imagined that Phobos was going to go in right away. Like, you just drop a coil on a hero to get a kill, and that's why he BKB'd, assuming that the team was just going to follow up straight away. And as soon as I realized that they weren't committed to the fight, and that BKB is popped, you have to run. You cannot fight without magic immunity outside of your base. And for that mistake, VP, they get double racks by Na'Vi. They're going to try and chase this FNG, maybe see if you can find a Fisher. It's not going to be the Fisher, and maybe Na'Vi wanting to turn this Boros Strike on into Illidan and Lil. Do Na'Vi want to continue this fight? Phobos being forward here with the Waning Rift. Then he puts the BKB, moves forward just straight into the center of it all. Trying to get an Echo Stab coming out from FNG, just catch, but FNG is still going to go down. He just doesn't have the damage follow up on this Earthshaker. Lil having to back off, and it's one for one trade so far. G's put the BKB, trying to take down these Necro units that are looking for Illidan. Won't find him, but now Phobos taking the return damage. And and that's going to be it until G finds a Vost. Does a Vost get himself away? They've got the Dream Call of Vost. He could be in a bit of a spot of a bother here, but Artstyle coming back in. It's an Echo Funnic finding the Burrow Strike onto Phobos. There'll be the Ghost coming out from Illidan. Phobos incredibly low, and Illidan trying to stop the Funnic. Funnic's going to be kept alive here as he yields himself up into the air. Plus the Sandstorm, it won't be enough. They do pick off the Sand King. Now the Wolves and a the Vost. They're looking for Illidan. They're looking for Lil. Artstyle and Snake are chasing this one down. Now the Blast oh, flying over to Illidan. They'll pick off the Drow Ranger. And now with the disruption onto Lil, that's going to be another kill for Na'Vi as they take down the Drow and the Visage. Top lane is going to be the focus, and this could be in their verging on Mega Creeps. There's no buyback for G, there's no buyback for Illidan. Fischl will come out, they're sending the Familiars out as well, but look at that graph, how far it's just steeped off in favor of Na'Vi, thanks to all those kills that they've got. And G, G is called, we're going to game five, Andy. I don't think anyone coming into this series expected anything less than a Game 5, but maybe not in this fashion. No. It was 2-0 into another 2-0, and now it's just match point. No matter who takes the next game, we will see a champion out of the next game. So, I gotta say, again, for this draft, it didn't really feel like... I've seen VP run Drow in the past, and it's been very successful. And I think a lot of it is based off the fact that in the middle lane, G actually gets a hero that he can bully with. I think a lot of it was not...